Good day grade 12s. My name is Viola from the Distinction Bound Student and I would like to welcome you to Lesson 84 from the Distinction Bound Student Grade 12 Economics Textbook written by Cardin Madzokir. In Lesson 83, we introduced you to the module Economic Pursuits from which we covered economic growth and development. The link to the video is in the description box down below. Please like and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell in order for you to get notified every time we post. We have tons of videos that can help you get a distinction in either economics or business studies. We are working on adding more subjects to the channel. As usual, we will start our lesson with revision of our homework that was given in the previous video linked down below. Number 1. An increase in the standards of living of the population is called economic development. Number 2. An increase in the capacity of the economy to produce more is known as economic growth. Number 3. The difference between economic growth and economic development is that economic growth consists of growth of the real GDP and implies an increase in the capacity of the economy to produce more goods and services while economic development consists of an increase of per capita real GDP. It looks at the standards of living of the country's citizens. Take note, real GDP is different from per capita real GDP. Real GDP measures growth, per capita real GDP measures development. Lesson 95 will clarify the difference in more depth. Number 4. Name any four redress measures currently used in South Africa. Well, before I respond, I need to explain to you the meaning of redress. Redress in this case means correcting imbalances of the past. South Africa has had a lot of imbalances, especially those created by apartheid. So to answer the question, South Africa uses the following, Broad-Based Black Economic Empowerment Act, Employment Equity Act, Land Restitution Act, Land Redistribution Act, Policy Promoting Equality, Poverty Reduction Policy, and Affirmative Action. If you are unsure about your answer, put it in the comments section down below. That way we will be able to tell you if it's wrong or correct. Now let's look at Unit 2, the Supply Side Approach to Growth and Development. What are supply factors? Well, supply factors are factors that influence the quantity of a good that the producer plans to sell in the market. Supply factors can contribute to economic growth by an increase in resources, such as natural resources, labor, capital and entrepreneurship and an increase in efficiency with which such resources are used. Supply-side approach focuses on the expansion in the production capacity of the economy. The South African government uses the supply-side approach complementing or in addition to a demand-side approach. This reminds me of something. I had a discussion with Cardin on which side he would prioritize if he was the government. What do you think his response was? He said he would focus more on supply-side policies because such policies lead to growth, which in turn lead to development. He went on to say demand-side policies do the same but the effect might not be the same. Well, personally I would prioritize demand-side policies. It doesn't mean I'm wrong or Cardin is wrong. We simply have different points of view on this matter. What do you think? Please give your input in the comments section down below. While you are down there, be sure to give us a like. Also subscribe for more videos like this. Moving on, we are now going to look at efficiency and effectiveness of markets. Efficiency in simple terms is the ability to avoid wasting resources. I'm sure you like my definition. Always keep it simple. Here at the Distinction Bound Student we are obsessed with simplicity. We always wonder why other books fail to keep things simple. I think that's why Cardin always say economics is easy. He says learners who fail the subject deserve lunch. I guess he says so because he oversimplifies things. Why wouldn't you get a distinction? Come on, don't make us buy you lunch. I guess I'm off ramping now, let me focus on my lesson. Where was I? Oh yeah. Both productive and allocative efficiency lead to an increase in output by efficiently making use of resources. Perfect markets tend to be more efficient than imperfect markets due to competition. Effectiveness on the other hand is the ability of a business to accomplish their aims in terms of profitability and growth. You see, that way we say the business is effective. Business efficiency is how much output a business produces for a unit of input. Some measures serve as incentives to increase efficiency while others assist in establishing and improving efficiency. That's why we call this, supply-side approach. The promotion of greater competition serves as an incentive for new businesses to enter the market. Take note, when those new businesses enter, it would lead to increased competition, which then leads to increased efficiency. Since 1994 many barriers to international trade have been lifted, 
which has led to a significant increase in competition. The Competition Act of 1998 is aimed at limiting the number of monopolies formed and reducing or eliminating the power of monopolies. The act led to the establishment of the Competition Commission, the Competition Tribunal and the Competition Appeal Court. The end result is greater output or supply. That's why we call it a what? A supply-side approach. I'm sure everything so far is clear. Now let's look at the cost of doing business. In South Africa, government controls most physical infrastructure components. The availability and cost of infrastructure services play an important role in the financial viability and profitability of businesses. Examples of infrastructure components I mentioned are transport and communication costs. Transport options for businesses are air, road, rail and sea. The government controls air and sea transport in South Africa. Government has committed to improving the efficiency and reliability of its rail transport services and to make it more affordable. Making it more affordable is a supply-side approach because it makes it possible for supply to increase. Let's look at communication costs. Communication options are cable, signal, and mail. The government controls cable and mail communication services. Cable communication services in South Africa is one of the most expensive in the world but reasonably efficient. High cost makes IT services for businesses and individuals expensive and inhibits global competitiveness. Now, moving on to the last segment of our lesson, we will look at factors of production. We want to see how factors of production are an important aspect of the supply-side approach. For the expansion in the production capacity of an economy to take place, an increase in the quality and quantity of the following factors is required. Let's start with natural resources, otherwise known as land. Land plays an important role in the production process and therefore must be protected so that sustainability is ensured. The extraction of these resources must also be efficient. When natural resources are available, manufacturers are able to produce because raw materials will be available. Therefore, ensuring that raw materials are available is a supply-side approach to economic growth and development. It can't get easier than that. I'm sure you agree with me. The second factor I'll explain is human resources, otherwise known as labor. Better education and training to improve skills, flexibility and mobility helps increase aggregate supply. Spending on education and training, like you are currently doing, is likely to improve labor productivity and is an essential supply side policy option, and one favored by the South African government. A government may spend money directly or provide incentives for private suppliers to enter the market. Government may also set and monitor standards of teaching and influence schools to include a skills component in the curriculum. If human resources are well-skilled, output increases due to high levels of productivity, and therefore it is a supply-side approach to economic growth and development. Remember in the previous lesson, Lesson 83 linked down below, we mentioned low levels of productivity as one of the characteristics of developing countries. You see that if our government invests in education, it will help eliminate some of those characteristics. This would get us a step closer to be regarded as a developed country like those in the North. You will understand it more in Lesson 87, also linked down below. We haven't made that video yet, but I know majority will watch in future and it will definitely be linked. The third factor is capital. Capital formation, better known as investment spending is of paramount importance because without capital, production is mostly impossible. For example, a human cannot cut down a tree with bare hands. He will need a specific tool like an axe, and that tool is capital. Take note, the acquisition or buying of the axe mentioned in my example is capital formation. The primary, secondary and tertiary sectors all need capital to produce required output. Both government and businesses must continually increase capital formation. This will lead to an increase in output, and therefore it's a supply-side approach to economic growth and development. Last but not least, we will look at technology. I know that you are surprised because you were expecting the last one to be entrepreneurship. I asked Cardin, shouldn't this be entrepreneurship? He said, at the distinction-bound student, yes we simplify concepts but we also make sure that we always comply with what the Department of Education wants. The ADP says technology, so we talk about technology because that what the department wants. That way, we don't just claim to be CAPS compliant, we are actually CAPS compliant because we follow the ADP 100%. Anyways, technology is the collection of techniques, skills, methods, and processes used in the production of goods and services.
Due to technology, communication is rapid, travel is fast, movement is easy, action is quick. As a result, goods that used to take hours to produce may now only take seconds to make. If a country focuses on improvement in technology, production becomes more efficient, faster, and that way more can be produced this year than last. We call that growth. Therefore, it is a supply-side approach to economic growth and development. As usual, we conclude with homework activity 75. Question 1. Discuss competition as a South African approach to supply-side policy. 8 marks. That's it for now. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also hit the notification bell for you to get notified every time we post new content to our channel. We are also giving away the Distinction Bound student t-shirts to people who buy more than 10 books. At the moment we have the following textbooks, Economics Grade 10, 11 and 12 plus Business Studies Grades 11 and 12. We are looking forward to adding more books to our catalog. Remember our books come in two versions, Complete and No Answers versions. Complete versions have answers and No Answers versions do not. Thank you so much for your support. See you in the next video. God bless.